Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I want to talk about some of the new backpacking gear that I'll be adding to my pack list for my summer through hike. All right, so if you have been following me over on Instagram or watching some of my latest YouTube videos, you'll know that I've been hardcore teasing a big hike that I have coming up next month. Now, I have not yet released what I'm doing, but next week I will be dropping a video letting everybody know what my summer hiking plans are. So for this hike in particular, I'm going to have to use a lot of different types of gear, stuff I've never used before, stuff that I haven't used in years, but regardless, I'll have to swap things out here and there depending on the type of trail and environment that I'm in. So I figured today I would show you some of that new gear that I'll be adding to my kit. Now, coming up very soon, probably in the next two weeks, I'll be dropping my full gear list for what my summer hike is, so keep an eye out for that. All right, so the first piece of gear that I'm gonna be adding to my kit, something that I haven't used in years, is a set of traction devices. So back whenever I was on the PCT in 2018, I used a pair of micro spikes. A lot of through hikers when they're doing the PCT, when they're going through the Sierra, because it's still snowy, because it's icy, will carry either crampons or micro spikes. Now, the entire time that I had micro spikes, I only used them maybe one time, maybe twice, and even though they are lighter and more compact than a pair of crampons, they still kind of seemed like they were overkill, at least for me. So because I am gonna be starting at some higher elevations, there's probably gonna be a little bit of snow even though it's in July, I decided to pick up a pair of V3 Vargo pocket cleats or Vargo pocket cleats version three. Uh, these things are really interesting. I've kind of been checking them out for a while, but they're specifically made for trail runners. So. Here is my hiking shoe. Oh, I guess by the way, uh, I'm also using a new hiking shoe on this hike. If you guys didn't check out the video that I did talking about the Lone Peak 5 compared to some other shoes that I've used over the past year, I'll, uh, I'll put that up here, go check that out. But regardless, how they work is they strap to the bottom of a trail runner like the Lone Peak. It has these three little cleats on here that are made of titanium. Each one of them has four teeth and then it actually just kind of wraps around the shoe, goes through the eyelets, and they're super compact. There are two of them in here, and with both of those and the bag, the entire set only weighs 4.8 ounces. Now, I'm not even 100% sure that I'm gonna need traction devices while I'm on this hike, but just in case for that little section that I might need them in the beginning, I'm gonna be carrying the Vargo pocket cleats. All right, the next piece of gear that I'm adding to my kit is something I have never used on a hike, and that is bear spray. So I have hiked through bear country multiple times over well, close to 9,000 miles, but typically it's always black bear. Now, I personally have never felt like I needed protection from a black bear. I've never carried bear spray. Now, before everyone jumps into my comments and says, well, you need bear spray with black bears, and they're I get it. I personally have never needed it. Again, almost 9,000 miles of hiking. However, on this hike, I will be hiking through grizzly country, at least for a while. So carrying a can of bear spray feels like a must for me. I hope that I don't have to use this, and the plan is just to carry this in my little front pocket uh, on my pack. Um, in my little Waymark Lycra pouch up here. But pretty interesting that I have hiked almost 9,000 miles to this point over the past six years and I've never hiked in grizzly country and I've never had to worry about using bear spray. So I will be adding that to my gear list. Let's hope I don't have to use it. All right, so the next piece of gear that I'm gonna be adding to my kit is nothing new, something I used years ago. I stopped using for about a year and a half and for this hike, I'm going back to it, and that is my cold soaking jar. So I'll be kicking my stove and my titanium pot and a fuel can to the curb for this hike. Now, even though I am carrying a cold soaking jar, 
I mainly just plan on going stoveless. So most of the time on this trail, I'll be eating dried cold food like nuts and tuna and making wraps with tortillas and stuff like that. But on those occasions that I decide to send myself some couscous, hashtag body by couscous, or eat a nor rice side or something, I will have the option to cold soak. Uh, I'm also gonna use this to make my coffee in the morning, to put a little bit of coffee and cold water in here. Um, and I'm even thinking about carrying a little bit of a meal replacement. So this will be nice to be able to put that in here, shake it up and drink that as I'm going along the trail. So I'm going back. I'm going back to the, the hashtag stoveless life, the, the cold soaking life, if you will. Um, it's not for everybody. Sometimes it's not even for me, but for this hike, especially because I'm starting in July, it's gonna be warmer. I'm gonna be in some warmer sections. Eating hot food at the end of the day is just not something I wanna do. So back to the cold soaking jar. All right, the next accessory that I'm gonna be adding to my gear list is something I never thought that I'd say that I would use again, and that is a padded hip belt. So on this hike, I will have to do some longer food carries, some longer water carries, and I will be using my Waymark Evolve 35 liter, the pack that I helped design. So because I have super bony hips, sometimes when I'm using my typical one inch removable webbing hip belt, and I have a lot of weight on my back, like I'm doing a really big food carry, it really eats into my hips and it's not so comfortable. So I decided to pick this removable padded minimalist hip belt up from Light AF. This thing only weighs two ounces. It has these cool little quick clips, so it does clip on to my Evolve. And again, for those sections that I'll have to be carrying extra food, extra water, this is going to help me tremendously to hold that weight better on my hips. Now, if you're not super bony uh, like I am and you actually have some hips, typically you can just use a one inch removable hip belt that comes with packs like the Evolve. But for me, um, I've tried and I just need that little bit of extra padding. So I think adding that two ounces to my pack for those sections is gonna be pretty great. The next piece of gear is again, something that's not new to my gear list, but I will be adding in certain sections. So. Typically, I use the Catadyne B-Free filter, and that has kind of become my favorite filter over the years. However, it doesn't always do great in sections of trail that have really nasty, silty, dirty water. It's really good for mountain streams and, and fresh springs and stuff like that. So I will be using that filter on most of this hike, but in those sections where I need to carry extra water where the water is bad, I will actually be sending myself and swapping out with the Sawyer Squeeze Filter. Um, this filter just tends to do better with nastier, siltier water. So along the trail, on down the trail, I will send myself this along with my Knock Vecto Water Bladder mainly because I am gonna need to do longer water carries, and this is just gonna allow me to carry more water on those dry sections. It typically works better with the Sawyer Squeeze. I also have the Be Free version of this, but I think the Squeeze version of this with the regular thread on it just works a little bit better with the Sawyer. So I will be adding that to my list, but really only using it for a certain section of this trail. So the next piece of gear that I'm actually gonna be swapping out is nothing new and something I've been using for the past year and a half. And actually, I'm gonna be swapping it out with the exact same thing, just a little updated, and that is the Thermarest Uber Light sleeping pad. Now, for the past year and a half, I have been using the Uber Light, and it's done great for me. A lot of people have problems with that pad popping or maybe not being warm enough. I have not had a single problem with it popping, getting a hole in it, or not being warm enough because I'm a pretty warm sleeper. However, when I was out on the Benton Mackay Trail, I started getting the dreaded leaky valve. Now, this is nothing new for me with Thermarest pads. Actually, every Thermarest pad I've ever owned eventually leaks at the valve. And when I was on the PCT in 2018, I went through three Neo Airs because of the leaky valve. It's even gotten to the point to where I get one of those pads, I take super glue and reinforce around the bottom of the valve to make sure it doesn't leak. Well, when I was out on the Benton Mackay Trail, 
my Uber light started leaking around the valve. I sealed it up with some super glue, which helped get me to the end of the trail or when I got off. But because I'm going into a new hike, because this is a new season and I don't want to use a defective piece of gear, I decided to pick up the new version of the Uber light that does have a locking wing valve. Now I've been using the X-Therm, the Neo Air X-Therm during my winter hikes and that has the new valve on it. And I gotta say so far that thing has held up great. So I decided to pick up this new version of the pad. So hopefully I get lucky and I don't get a leaky pad while I'm out on this hike. So the Uberlite, the new Uberlite is what I'm adding to my pack. All right, last but not least is a piece of gear that I am really excited about using on this hike and during all of these summer trips. And that is my new sun hoodie. So if you guys have been following my videos for the past year, you'll know that I started exclusively hiking in a sun hoodie. I kind of stopped wearing these collared button up shirts to hike in, went with the sun hoodie and about four months ago, five months ago, I started designing and developing my own sun hoodie, my own hiking top, taking the things that I like and don't like about certain hiking tops that I've used over the years and developing my own, doing a US made, US material sun hoodie. Now, this is actually a prototype. This is not the one that I'll be using. Uh, this is actually the wrong material and it's way too big, but this was sent to me to basically verify all of the different seams and, and what we're actually working on. Uh, here, I can show you, um, you know, it's got a thumb hole. So the thumb hole placement, the hood design, all of that. And at the end of this week, before I take off onto this hike, I will have a version that is made out of the correct material that is my right size. And during my hikes, I will be testing, developing, and designing the sun hoodie. And hopefully at the end of this hiking season, it will be available to the masses. So I'm pretty excited to take this out on this hike. Um, I would show it to you guys, but I kind of can't right now. So I just figured I'd ball it up. And again, this is a, uh, technically it's not the right material. It's not the right size. So bear with me, folks. It is coming soon and I'll keep you guys updated. Now, if you follow me over on Patreon, patrons have been updated for quite some time about the development of this and the certain materials that we were using and all of that. Um, but pretty excited. I will keep you guys updated a brand new sun hoodie for me to hike in and test and develop while I'm out on this hike. All right, guys, so that's it. That is everything that I'm gonna be adding to my gear list for this big hike and the rest of my summer trips that I have this year. Again, I'll be kind of swapping things in and out according to the section and the environment that I'm hiking in. And again, I will be putting out a full gear list coming up soon and announcing what I'm actually hiking this year. I'm pretty excited about it. I think you guys will be pretty excited about it too. So what is some new gear that you've recently added to your gear list? What are you currently testing and thinking about using in the future? Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.